depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. You're out of there, leaky store brands. When all else fails, try North Shore Adult Diapers for even the heaviest control problems. Visit NorthShore.com. Cubs, Marlins at Wrigley Field, sunny, 54 degrees, wind blowing from left to right. It's time now to give you access to Craig Council, sponsored by Access One, best in the business, managed IT, cybersecurity, and more. AccessOneIT.com. Here's Coon. Counts, we just get home off the road, three-city trip out west. Um, your thoughts on the West Coast road trip? Yeah, I mean, it was we fi- we finished up well. We we won the last two two series. Um, and anytime I think you you win a road series, uh, you, you're pleased for sure. Um, obviously, some some crazy games on the trip, and and you know we you get you get all crazy game. We shouldn't have lost. We shouldn't have won. You know, it just you just you play the game. You get a result. What happens? And then you you got to move on to the next day. That's the nature of a baseball season. Um, and the teams that don't let good or bad that happen the day before are the the consistent and more successful team so you know we we had games we felt like we should have won no question about it you you, uh, you never acknowledge the games you think you probably should have lost <laughs> right. and then we had a couple of those yeah, too right. to be honest with you so in the end it's a five and four road trip it's a winning record on the on a road trip and and that's a good thing Going into today's ball game, yesterday game gets canceled, um, and you've made some roster moves because of all of the the cancellation. You got a double dip tomorrow. Um, your thoughts on the roster moves? Yeah, we we uh, got Patrick Wisdom back, who's been um, you know on the injured list and playing really well down in Iowa. And with some left-handed pitching this series, it was the right time to to add him and. Um, He'll play right field today, um, and then we also obviously James Tyon is off the injured list as well, and and that's you know one of our starters just getting him healthy back. Um, in this run of kind of games, we are at times putting in a sixth starter, and really kind of JMO's spot this time is is serving that role as to give everybody an extra day's rest, um, and then obviously as we move forward, we're gonna have to figure out kind of where the rotation sits with some with an extra guy in it. With Jamo not pitching a lot and not pitching at all really in spring training in a game and then coming here, is there any uh, pitch counts or anything that you're looking at or are you going to let him pitch and just see what you get? Well, I think any time a guy's making his first start of the season, we're going to be cautious of pitch counts for sure. So we'll we'll have our eye on it. Um, he's he's got he's had a bunch of rest. Um, obviously, the extra day pushed back, so he's had a week off since he pitched. So completely fresh and ready to go. Um, so all good from that perspective. But obviously, first start coming off an injury, you're always going to keep your eye on it. You're going to face quite a few left-handers with um, the Marlins in town. Um, your lineup today. Yeah, so right-handed heavy for sure, um, and, and getting wisdom back in there helps with that. Um, given Michael Bush a day, uh, Garrett Cooper will play first base, um, and Ma- Nick Madrigal is over at third with with Christopher DH in today. So, got most of uh, right right-handed heavy lineup with just Cody as the only left-handed hitter. Good luck today. Thanks, Coom. That's the manager show. Zach, back to you. More on the pitching matchup next. Coom on the score and the Cubs radio network. Anything can happen anytime in any game right here on the Chicago Cubs radio network. 
Experience the difference with premium quality paints that deliver excellent coverage and durability, ensuring your home shines with brilliance season after season. Step into spring with a palette of colors inspired by the blooming beauty of nature, like the soft pastel pink color of pale cherry blossom to the vibrant green of spring leaf. Paint a picture-perfect season with Benjamin Moore. To find a locally-owned retailer near you or to shop online, visit BenjaminMoore.com. Benjamin Moore is the official paint of Wrigley Field, Illinois Bone and Joint Institute, dedicated to helping you move better so you can live better. Our team of highly trained professionals provides empathetic, timely, efficient, and highest quality care to our patients. From state-of-the-art imaging to convenient rehab locations, we're here for you. With 14 ortho access immediate care facilities, get same-day orthopedic treatment. Experience close-to-home care you deserve. Visit ibji.com for locations and services. Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up! And call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. Do you find yourself stuck in a timeshare? Get the real facts about the timeshare industry and your options for cancellation. Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, has put together a free information guide that reveals the secrets the timeshare industry doesn't want you to know, including the five ways to get rid of your timeshare. Call now and get this timeshare cancellation guide absolutely free. Call 800 800- 838-6161. That's 800-838-6161. 800-838-6161. Meet the all-new Potawatomi Casino Hotel Milwaukee. 12 bars and restaurants, 3,000 slot machines, table games, sports betting, and more. Light up your senses at Potawatomi. Explore more at PaysBig.com. Cubs hosting Miami. Who are you banking on? Is sponsored by Busey Bank. Building business, growing wealth. Since 1868, Nico Horner's hitting 320 over his last seven games. I'm banking on him, and there's a lefty on the mound today. The pitching matchup is sponsored by Ziggler Subaru of Kenosha. Enjoy the laid-back experience of Ziggler Subaru of Kenosha. Jamison Tyone is making his season debut after recovering from a back strain. Last year, Tyone struggled as a Cub, a 4.84 ERA. The team lost 18 of his 29 starts. He finished 8-10. and 10. A.J. Puck going for Miami, a left-hander who is 0-3 with a 5.91 ERA. He hasn't pitched in 10 days because of an illness. Puck has walked 14 of 58 batters that he's faced this season. Now let's pause as we get set for the playing of the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we walk so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Jackie 
Dustin performing the national anthem this afternoon at Wrigley Field. The national anthem sponsored by American Sale. Bring the fun home. It's time to go around baseball sponsored by Great Clips. For your next haircut, go to Great Clips. It's going to be great. Only one afternoon game today, and that's the one here at Wrigley Field between the Cubs and the Marlins. But Justin Verlander will make his long-awaited season debut against the Nationals tonight. Verlander back for the Astros recovered from right shoulder inflammation. Now it's time for baseball at Wrigley. Cubs, Marlins, Pat, Ron, next on the score and the Cubs radio network. Hall of Famer Pat Hughes and Ron Coomer bring you all the action on the Chicago Cubs radio network. Hi, this is Dave Musial, owner of Four Seasons Heating, Air Conditioning, Plumbing, and Electric. And I personally guarantee to beat any quote on a new furnace and AC by up to $1,000. Even the so-called buy a furnace, get an air conditioner free. That's right. Four Seasons will beat any so-called buy one, get one free offer by $1,000. And Four Seasons guarantees same-day installation. And we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. So call today. For all the right reasons, call 866-4-SEASONS. It's a busy day. You are running late for work, and up ahead, you spot orange barrels. It's a work zone. You've got to think fast. The time is ticking as two lanes merge to one. You have two options. Option A, floor it, cut off a trucker, and risk not only an expensive ticket, but your life and the lives of others. Option B, slow down, follow the signs, and add 30 seconds to your commute. Option B, selected. Mind the signs, avoid the fines. Visit itsnotagameillinois.com to learn more. Hefty Trash Bags, the official trash bags of the Chicago Cubs. Hefty, ultra-strong trash bags resist rips, tears, and leaks. Strength that's anything but ordinary. Hefty, hefty, hefty! Chicago Cubs baseball is on the score and the Odyssey app. Ian Happ drives one in the air. That ball is gone! Throughout the season, catch every Cubs game live on 670 The Score. And if you live in the Chicago area, listen live on the free Odyssey app. Plus, talk Cubs every day with Mulligan Haw, Bernstein and Holmes, and Parkins and Spiegel. Diving backhand stop by Horner, throws to first to get him. Sensational play by Nico Horner. The voices you know, the team you love. Your Chicago Cubs, your Odyssey. This Odyssey Sports Broadcast is presented by Health Markets. Shop for health insurance your way. And now, Odyssey and 670 The Score bring you Chicago Cubs baseball on the Cubs radio network. Get out the tape measure long gone. Second deck for Cody Bellinger. Back near the stands. That ball is gone. Chicago Cubs baseball is presented to you in part by Benjamin Moore, Benny's Beverage Depot, Hefty Trash Bags, Ziegler Subaru of Kenosha, James Hardy Building Products, Sloan, Stella Blue Coffee, Traffic Tech, Wintrust Community Banks, your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers, Granger, official partner of the Chicago Cubs in Wrigley Field, Aturo Tires, and by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. And now, here's the Hall of Famer, Pat Hughes and Ron Coomer, with all the exciting play-by-play action of Chicago Cubs baseball. Chicago Cubs baseball is on the air from Wrigley Field in Chicago. It's game one of a four-game series between the Chicago Cubs and the Miami Marlins. Good afternoon, everybody, along with former Cub and all-Cub and all-star Ron Coomer. It's Pat Hughes reporting. It is bright and sunny and beautiful, a little on the chilly side, but not bad at all. 54 degrees, cloudless blue skies, a gorgeous day, actually. Lake Michigan, a deep, dark shade of aquamarine and we are all set for baseball here at Wrigley. The starting pitchers for game one Jamison Tyone to make his first start of the season for the Cubs and left-hander A.J. Puck is on the mound for Miami. Let's go ahead and get right to the starting lineups sponsored by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois through it all. Leading off for the Marlins at second base Luis Arise. Brian De La Cruz is the designated hitter. Batting third in center, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Josh Bell 
at first base. Jesus Sanchez batting fifth. Sanchez in right field. The shortstop is the former White Sox, Tim Anderson. Nick Gordon is batting seventh. Gordon in left. Emmanuel Rivera at third base. And Nick Fortes is batting ninth and doing the catching. Those are the Marlins. For the Cubs, it'll be Nico Horner leading off at second base. Patrick Wisdom making his first appearance of the year. Wisdom in right field. Cody Bellinger in center. Christopher Morrell is the designated hitter today. Morrell batting fourth. Dansby Swanson at shortstop. Ian Happ is hitting sixth. Happ in left field. The first baseman is the former Marlin, Garrett Cooper. Cooper batting seventh. Nick Madrigal at third base. And Miguel Amaya doing the catching and batting ninth. Game time temperature 54 degrees. It's breezy, wind blowing out toward right. Game time temperature sponsored by Four Seasons Heating, Air Conditioning, Plumbing, and Electric. Your trusted local experts, Four Seasons. We are ready to go. The Cubs and the Marlins back to get it started right after this. You are listening to The Score and the Cubs Radio Network. Chicago Cubs memories are made right here with Pat, Ron, and Zach on the Cubs Radio Network. Bosch tools are built for workers. Bosch's powerful hammer drill has kickback control to help work go more smoothly when you need it. The two-in-one impact driver and wrench quickly changes between bits and sockets, so you only need one tool instead of two. And the X-Lock grinder switches wheels up to five times faster than standard grinders when you need to change tasks in a hurry. Bosch tools take care of the job and you. Bosch Tools, what hard workers deserve. Learn more at BoschTools.com. Experience the new Genesis of Algonquin to see how every Genesis is meticulously designed and crafted for luxury. Visit GenesisOfAlgonquin.com. Go ahead. You're back. Right-hander Jamison Tyone, big man, 6'5", 230-pounder. He is ready to make his first appearance of the year. He's been out with back issues. And we are all set for baseball. Last night's game rained out. It'll be made up as part of a day-night doubleheader tomorrow. First things first, this ball game today. Luis Arise leads off, hits a fly ball to center. Bellinger going back with room, gloves it. And Arise, last year's batting champion, Going after that first pitch, lines out to deep center, one down in the batter, Brian De La Cruz. And Ron, as you think about Jamison Tyone pitching for the Cubs today, what's on your mind? Well, first of all, the season couldn't start any better for Jamo. One pitch, one out. If it keeps <laughs> going like that, he's going to have one heck of a year. I'm just happy for him. You know, you get to camp and you're ready to go, and then you have an injury and you don't get to start on time, really. didn't get the pitch in spring training. I'm just happy for him. You know, you get to camp and you're ready to go. It was grinding on him to be in Mesa when the team left for the season. Here comes the 1-1, swinging a foul back. Cubs in their home uniforms, the familiar blue pinstripes all over, the blue hats, sleeves, and socks, they're all blue. Tyone wearing white shoes. Some of the guys have dark shoes on. Not many. Most of them wear white kicks as I look around. Swing and a miss, strike three, a big high floating curveball. De La Cruz is out number one, strikeout number one for Tyone. Just underway, no score, two down, bases empty, first inning, and the batter, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Yeah, good breaking ball. Tyone's going to be up there in the uh, low to mid-90s with the fastball today. Good breaking ball. Speed gun is always powered by Xfinity. Stream sports with Xfinity because it's only live once. Chisholm will take a strike 0-1. The Marlins in their traveling grays, gray shirts and trousers. They've got teal-colored numbers on their backs. Black helmets, black sleeves and socks. Chisholm takes low and outside for a ball, and they also have a variety of shoe colors. Uniform description sponsored by Benjamin Moore. 
Transform your clubhouse into a Cubs house with Cubbies Blue, Wrigley Field Green, or Marquee Red official paint of the Chicago Cubs. Chisholm surprised me by showing bunt. Now here's a left-handed batter. The wind is blowing out toward right. Two down, first inning, nobody on. And he's thinking about laying yeah, down a bunt? I, I don't understand it. No, that's not something you'd want your three-hole hitter doing. Swing and a miss, two and two. I was like a confirmation run yeah. with you sitting next to me. And when you see something unusual, I think, I I'll have to run this by Ron <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I just, I I'm as confused as you are. I doubt that. Here's a pitch outside <laughs> corner, strike three, called. And Tyone, off to a good start, works one, two, three with a pair of strikeouts at the end of a half inning. Miami nothing, and the Cubs coming up. This is the score and the Cubs radio network. Listen to every Cubs. SubaruKenosha.com. They'll light up the scoreboard every time. The village of New Lenox is at the crossroads of opportunity. Come see everything that New Lenox has to offer. Go to NewLenox.net today and start the adventure. New Lenox, it's extraordinary. The Cubs' leadoff man is Nico Horner. The leadoff man is presented by Benny's Beverage Depot. If Nico gets a base hit, Benny's will donate $100 to the Greater Chicago Food Depository. If you can't find it at Benny's, it's probably not worth drinking. The big, tall left-hander, A.J. Puck, he's a big man, 6'7", 248 pounds. Delivers ball one to Nico. Here comes the next pitch. And there's a fastball strike. What is the game plan, Ron, against A.J. Puck? Well, he's a guy, first of all, you got to make sure he's throwing strikes. He has had some issues with command this year. Swing and a drive, left center field, base hit in the alley. It's going to go all the way to the vines. Keep an eye on Nico, racing towards second, holding with a double. There's a good start. A close line into left center off the bat of Nico Horner. Two base hit. Well, and that's the other issue. Puck has given up a lot of hits. So it's been a lot of walks and a lot of hits. So right away, a lot of traffic when you look at his numbers here in three starts. He has gone into the fifth inning only once. His hits are more hits per inning pitched, and his walks are way more walks than innings pitched. Bad combination. So, you know, right away, you're going to get a good pitch to hit, and there's a good chance he could walk you if you have a long at bat. Patrick Wisdom batting for the first time. Swings at a slider, doesn't get it. Patrick has been out all year, began the season on the injured list. He's always done well against left-handed pitching. The tall southpaw deals. There's a breaking ball down low. Ron, getting back to your point about the, the traffic on the bases behind Puck. Ten and two-thirds innings. Now with the double by Horner to lead things off. 27 base runners in less than 11 innings. His record is 0-3 and a 5.91 ERA. He's actually fortunate that the ERA is not up around 9. Right. That just tells you that his stuff is pretty good. He's got a good live arm, 
or else th- those numbers would be out- outrageous, right? The ERA would be really high. Wisdom takes high and outside. It's two and one. Two base hit by Nico Horner as he leads at second base. And the pitch by A.J. Puck. Wisdom takes low and in. It's three and one. Doubles by Cubs batter, sponsored by Traffic Tech. Double up your business with Traffic Tech, the hardest working team in transport. Cubs 11 and 7 as they start this homestand. Fastball inside. Wisdom draws the walk. So immediately, Puck is in a jam. Cody Bellinger coming up. Ron, if you're Cody, how are you approaching this at bat? Well, you, you've you've got to see and make sure that Puck is going to throw strikes. He threw the first pitch to Wisdom. Patrick swung at it, but it was not even close. It was a slider down and in. Then he did not throw another strike in the at bat. So for me, you almost got to pay attention and just see if he's going to throw you some strikes. Lefty to lefty, breaking ball low outside, 1-0. No score. Bottom of the first. Cubs threatening. Nice crowd on hand. 54 degrees at Wrigley. And the pitch to Bellinger. Line drive. One hop off the glove of a diving bell. It goes into right field. A base hit. Corner around third. He will score. Cubs lead one to nothing. Stopping at second is Wisdom. Bell, the first baseman, tried to make a diving play. It hit the ground, then hit his glove and popped up into the air and fell into shallow right. It's a base hit for Bellinger. Cubs lead one to nothing. Line drive off the bat of Belly, and I I don't think that Bell got a good read off the bat on this ball. He kind instead of diving, he kind of goes to his right, hits his knees first, and it just didn't seem like he saw the ball all that well. It hit the heel of his glove and went in the short right. Nico scores easily, and the Cubs take the lead. Christopher Morrell, the batter, hitting 217. RBI number 13 for Cody Bellinger. Still nobody out. Cubs on the board, leading one to nothing. Morrell takes another bender in for a strike, nothing and two. RBIs by Cubs batters. Those are always sponsored by Old National Bank, where relationships and results matter. And the 0-2. Bouncer towards short. Anderson goes to a rise for one over to first. That's a double play. Morell hits into a twin killing. Now there are two down on the play. Wisdom goes to third. And the batter is Dansby Swanson. Now the one thing when you look at Puck and you see his stuff, he has a breaking up pat that is somewhat similar to a guy that played in my area, era, Randy Johnson, be great big guy, and he starts his breaking ball way out of the zone in the left-handed batter's box and sweeps it across the zone. So, in other words, hitters will give up on it, figuring there's no way that's going to be a strike. Correct. That's what I think just happened to Christopher. That ball started out away, way off the plate, then all of a sudden he realizes this is a strike, and I get two strikes, so I'm putting it in play the best I can, and you end up rolling over a little ground ball. Cubs lead one to nothing. Two down, a man at third. Swanson takes low. Sometimes we talk about overall game momentum. This is an important bat for Dansby. It looked like the Cubs were possibly going to get a bundle in the first inning. Now two down, a man at third. Let's see if he can drive in the run, get that momentum back on the Cubs side. Fastball is taken high, two and one. On the other hand, if Puck gets out of it, giving up just the one run, he's going to feel pretty good about it. Puck has a red glove. A big, tall left-hander in that gray outfit. Delivers 2-1. Fly ball to center. It's playable for Chisholm. Backing up near the warning track. It's over his head. It's up against the wall. Dansby Swanson gets an RBI double. Cubs lead 2-0. The sun and the wind conspired against Jazz Chisholm Jr. He kept drifting back. He misjudged the ball, and it goes for an RBI double. Cubs lead two to nothing. Big break for the Cubs. Yeah, very big break. Chisholm obviously didn't take a lot of balls in center field before the game. The ball really carrying to the middle and to right field. 
And this ball's well struck. You could tell that was well hit off the bat. And he just held his ground for a while until he figured out the ball's going over his head. And that's just a misplay by the center fielder, and that's an RBI double. For Swanson, his eighth RBI. Swanson at second base. Two runs in. The pitch to Hap in there for a strike. A curveball. Nothing in two. And another two-base hit. And the doubles, they're still sponsored by Traffic Tech. Double up your business with Traffic Tech, the hardest working team in transport. And now the 0-2. Hap swings, and did he miss it? Foul tipped it into the glove. Now, Hap thought it hit the dirt. Ian is going to question the home plate umpire, Alex McKay. I don't think that is a reviewable call, and McKay... In the defense of Ian Happ and his argument, I... blood transfusions to ensure Ellen and her baby had a compatible blood type. Today, my baby is healthy and full of life. Northwestern Medicine, better. Hefty Trash Bags, the official trash bags of the Chicago Cubs. Hefty, ultra-strong trash bags resist rips, tears, and leaks. Strength that's anything but ordinary. Hefty, hefty, hefty! Second inning, Cubs off to a good start. Jamison Tyone working, and the ball popped up off the bat of Josh Bell, playable near the plate, and it's caught by Miguel Amaya. I think runners today, Ron, would be very well instructed to run out everything. We've already seen the sun and the wind play a factor, and I don't think anything's really uh, what you might call routine today. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. The ball hit high in the air. The sun, it's a high sky. There's not a cloud in the sky anywhere. And the wind is blowing hard towards the right field corner. So the wind has already, as you said, played a big factor. Any ball hit to center or right center right field is really going to go. Tyone has set down the first four men he has faced. Cubs lead two to nothing second inning. Backdoor curve in there for a call strike two to Jesus Sanchez. Cubs baseball brought to you in part by Granger. Cubs actually count on Granger's help to keep this great ballpark Wrigley Field running. To get the products you need, call clickgranger.com or stop by Granger, official partner of the Chicago Cubs and Wrigley Field. Here comes the one two. Sanchez takes just a little bit outside, didn't miss by much. No backdoor hook by Tyone, just missed the corner. Double place turn by the Cubs by Nissan. They make cars the thrill. Experience the thrill for yourself today with Nissan. Bouncing ball toward the middle. Tough play. Backhander by Swanson. I mean by Horner. Jumps in the air and throws to first in time. What a play by Nico Horner. Backhanding the ball. Didn't bother to plant the foot. Didn't have time to. He just kind of twisted the upper body and made that 
jump, one hop, throw to first, dugout by Cooper. Beautiful play by Nico Horner. Yeah, you, you make this catch if you're Nico. You catch this ball, and you're running full tilt. You just jump, twist, and throw it as hard as you can throw it low towards the first baseman and hope he can give you a little help. Great play. Anderson lines one, caught by a sliding Dansby Swanson at shortstop. Well, we saw a little bit of the gold glove work of the middle infielders, Nico Horner and Dansby Swanson. One, two, three for Tyone. After one and a half innings, it's the... It's like an upscale home on wheels in here. It's your journey. Own every mile. Lease the Tucson for $269 a month or get 3.79% APR for 72 months or up to 2000 bonus cash. See your local Hyundai dealer or visit buyhyundai.com today. Call 224-661-0068 for details. If you're looking for a sign telling you what paint to use this summer, look no further than North Sheffield Avenue. Benjamin Moore, the official paint of Wrigley Field. Sundays are for kids on all Sunday afternoon games during the regular season up to the first 10th, I should say 1,000 kids, 13 and younger, have the opportunity to run the bases postgame at Wrigley Field, weather permitting. For more information, visit cubs.com slash kids. One of the cool things about the friendly confines, Pat. Thank you, Zach. Bottom of inning number two, Garrett Cooper, the former Marlin, checks, and that'll cost him a strike in the count one and one. Cubs leading two to nothing. The umpires today, Alex McKay calling balls and strikes. Edwin Moscoso at first. Swinging a bouncer toward third. Charging, gloving, and a running throw to first by Rivera is in time. Cooper bounces out to third. One away, and here comes Nick Madrigal. Adam Hamery is the second base umpire. And Vic Carapaza over at third. The announcement of the umpires, that's sponsored by Suits 2020 in Niles. Chicago's largest selection of men's and boys' prom and wedding outfits. Suits 2020. Low and inside, Madrigal gets hit in the lower left leg, and he's hurt. He never fell down, but uh, that had to sting. It hit him pretty flush between the, uh, the knee and the ankle. Couldn't tell exactly where it struck him as we watched, Ron. Yeah, that's an inside fastball, and I think it gets him right in the meaty part of his shin on his left leg, and that is going to leave a mark for a while. That is going to hurt. So there's been a walk and a hit batsman. Walks by opposing pitcher sponsored by North Shore Adult Diapers. Reassuringly strip, not string protection, strong protection. For even the heaviest control problems, a swing and a miss by Miguel Amaya. Visit NorthShore.com. Many times when I'm reading that, it sounds like someone opens the door and a little fresh air just comes flying through the door into our booth. Maybe it's just my imagination. Here Could comes the old problems. One. Low and inside, Amaya almost got hit by that pitch, one and one. You know, could be control problems. You never know. Well, I'm looking for some string protection. I know that. It's 
see, there it was again. I, I heard that now. Madrigal at first. And now the 1-1 one, one pitch from A.J. Puck is swung on and missed. And the count now 1-2. and two. Just getting started in a weekend full of baseball. Two games tomorrow. A day-night doubleheader. The first game begins at 1-20. The nightcap at 6-40. And then a 1-20 game on Sunday. Monday is a day off. Toss to first, chasing Madrigal back in. The Marlins were a playoff team a year ago. In fact, they were the last team to clinch a playoff spot. If you remember the final weekend, they beat the Pirates on a Saturday night, which gave them that final wild card spot, knocking the Cubs out. Yep. Now the Marlins were a good team. They were not a great team. They were 84 and 78, but they made the playoffs. They did lose their only two playoff games in Philadelphia. So they were done early. Swing and a miss by Amaya, and that's out number two. Their general manager a year ago was Kim Eng. Now, Kim was the first female ever to be a Major League Baseball general manager or mm -hmm. president of baseball yep. operations or whatever, any right. team. She was in charge. Yeah, the of head their, of baseball operations. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. First female ever, and she took them to the postseason in her first year. Curveball low and inside to Nico Horner. After the year, the Marlins decided to hire a person above her so that she would no longer have complete control, and she declined her end of a mutual contract option. Swinging a line drive down the left field line. That's a base hit. It's heading into the corner, racing toward third Madrigal. He's going to try to score. Here comes the throw. Anderson's throw to the plate, not in time. RBI double, Nico Horner, his second double of the day. Cubs lead three to nothing. Nice base coaching by Willie Harris and a good burst of speed exhibited by Nick Madrigal, scoring all the way from first. You're exactly right, Pat. Willie Harris does not hesitate. Madrigal, when he gets to about the shortstop position, rounding second, Willie is waving him around, and they know they want him to try to score, and they want to test the defense of this Marlins club. It has not been very good so far today, and things are going well, and Madrigal scores easily. A double clutch on the relay by Anderson allows really no play at the plate. I was surprised that his throw was cut off by the third baseman, the throw only about 70 or 80 feet in length. Anyway, Cubs lead by a score of three to nothing. Two outs in the inning. Horner two for two with a pair of doubles. That's his fourth run batted in. Whenever a Cub is safe at the plate, that's sponsored by Granger. Think safety, think Granger. And now the 1-1 one -one pitch to Patrick Wisdom lifted foul. But Kim Eng declined her end of a mutual contract option, and she left. Yep. The uh, Marlins did hire Peter Bendix, a former operations manager for the Tampa Bay Rays. Here comes the 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball is down low. Their manager, Skip Shoemaker, was the National League Manager of the Year. He just nosed out Craig Council, who, of course, was managing mm -hmm. Milwaukee before becoming the Cubs manager in November. Here comes the 2-2 now from A.J. Puck. Wisdom takes low. Patrick seems to be seeing this breaking ball pretty well. Yeah, he's chased the very first one down and in and then has not chased, I don't know, probably five of them is they keep trying to throw that slider down and into him, and he does not offer at it. Yeah, the 3-2. Wisdom takes strike three call. The fastball got him looking. Cubs get one on the RBI double by Horner. We go to inning number three. Cubs three, Miami nothing. This is the score and the Cubs radio network. Pat Hughes and Ron Coomer are Chicago...
to third. Cubs up three to nothing in its third inning is sponsored by Granger, official partner of the Chicago Cubs and Wrigley Field. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Patrick. Jamison Tyone run off to a very good start today, setting down the first six men he has faced. Nick Gordon now, son of one of your former Cub teammates, mm -hmm. Tom Flash Gordon. Nick Gordon took a strike and now takes one outside, one and one. Gordon hitting 206. The Marlins not hitting, and they are not pitching very well, and that's why they are 4 and 15 coming in. Swing and a miss by Gordon, the count one and two, and they've really had a hard time winning at home. They have played 13 home games, and their home record is a dreadful 2 and 11. That's when you know that a team might be in for a very long year. Yeah. You've got a long way to go just to get to 500. If you're the Marlins at home. Here comes the 2-2 two -two to Gordon. Chopper foul right side. They are tied with Colorado for the worst record right now in the National League. Again, they're not scoring. They're tied for 24th among the 30 teams in run scoring. And the 2-2. Fly ball, shallow right. Wisdom started back now, running in, gets there to make the catch. Wisdom, a good athlete. He's played mainly third base, but he does not embarrass himself defensively when he plays the outfield. One down. Batch of great speed. You talked about his athletic ability. And in that play, he did exactly what you should do. With the wind blowing out, the ball hit the right. You see a big swing. You hold your ground and make sure that the ball's not hit over your head. Read the play, and then you can always come in. The ball is getting blown to you in right field. Emmanuel Rivera takes a strike. Those flags are stiff out on the flagpole, blowing toward right and right center. Any ball hit in the air to that area will get some carry. Any ball hit in the air to left or left center will probably get knocked down. Boy, just a beautiful sky today in Lake Michigan, a gorgeous shade of blue. Not a cloud in the sky here at Wrigley Field. Here comes the windup and the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Rivera is out on strikes. That's three strikeouts for Jamison Tyone. It is time, Ron, to play the Benny's Beverage Depot attendance game. If you can't find it at Benny's, it's probably not worth drinking. Real good lower deck crowd and bleacher crowd, well populated today. Nick Fortes will take a strike, 0-1. I'm going to say we've got 26,762. Here's the 0-1. It's taken down low for a ball. Okay. Double Z, you want to make a guess? Yeah, I'm going to go 27,500. Okay. Paul Zerang, our longtime excellent engineer, he's going to make his guess. He's known as the maestro. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch. Swinging a foul back and out of play. I'll say 26,300. Paulie? Paul has just handed me an index card. There's a big monogrammed M on it for Maestro. It says 27,922. Okay, we're all set. We'll see how we did later on in the Benny's Beverage Depot attendance game. Nick Fortes waits for the 1-2. Pulled on the ground, foul toward third. Backhanded by Madrigal, but it didn't count. Cubs beginning a seven-game homestand today. These four over the weekend. Doubleheader tomorrow, single game Sunday. After Monday's off day, the Houston Astros come in. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday afternoon. Breaking ball is high, two and two. Speaking of the Astros, I see that Justin Verlander is going to make his season debut tonight for Houston in their game at Washington. 41-year-old Justin Verlander. The 2-2.
Irv breaks down low. And Ronnie almost reminds me of Nolan Ryan in the regard that even after the age of 40, he's still what you'd call a power pitcher. Oh, yeah. He's, he's rushing it up there in the high to mid-90s. Absolutely. 3-2 pitch, lifted foul down the right field line and out of play. That's rare, though, to see a guy do that after 40 years old. It, it absolutely is. Now, he has had some injury issues through the years. Not a lot because he's got a lot of a lot of games started, a lot of playoff games, but you got to tip your hat. He's, his arm has stayed healthy for the most part, and he is ready to go, and we're in the middle of April for that Houston Astros club. 3-2 pitch on the way, fouled away. Trying to think about Nolan Ryan's last no-hitter. I want to say he was like 45 years yeah, old, 46 he, maybe even. Pitched until he was 47. Now the 3-2 on the way to Fortes. Fouled away again. Think of that. You're 30 years old playing in the big leagues. And if you could see out, see the future... You still got 17 more <laughs> years of big league playing. You're just getting started. Just getting cranked up. Think of that. He was a worker, though. Nolan yeah. Ryan, I used to get there early, and he'd be out playing the game of pickup where a coach would just roll the ball off to the side. Then he would roll another ball to the other side, and, and Nolan is doing the shuffle step mm -hmm. back and forth, sweating profusely, working. Ground ball to short, fielded by Swanson, throws to first in time. One, two, three. We go to the bottom of the third. Tyone with three perfect innings so far. It's the Cubs three and the Marlins nothing. This is the score and the Cubs. Hundred three seven two forty forty. Bellinger is on deck for the Cubs. Who's on deck is sponsored by On Deck. Need a small business loan fast? Apply today at OnDeck.com. Huh? Bellinger had a single and drove in a run his first time. In fact, he drove in the first run for the Cubs. Lefty to lefty. Cody will take a strike breaking ball from A.J. Puck. If you are just joining us in the first inning, Horner doubled. Wisdom walked. Bellinger single to drive in a run, and with two outs, Swanson double to drive in a run. Swinging a foul back by Bellinger. In the second inning, a two-out run scoring double by Nico Horner down the left field line. Drove in Nick Madrigal. Cubs three runs, four hits. The Marlins without a base runner so far against Jamison Tyone. Swinging a foul back by Bellinger. Cubs were just two and four against these Marlins a year ago. They played them early in the year, losing all three down in Miami. And then the Cubs took two out of three in the series at Wrigley. 
Cubs had a 5-1 and one homestand to get this season underway. Sweeping Colorado and winning the series two out of three against the Dodgers. First home game in 12 days. That's a <laughs> long time in baseball to go between home games. I know somebody has said in the past, I didn't really notice. Here's a swing and a looper into shallow right field. <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> Falling in there for a base hit for Cody Bellinger. Before Morrell steps in, we step away 10 for ID. This is the score and the Cubs Radio Network. Talking Cubs and all of Chicago's teams on the Parkinson Spiegel Show. Afternoons 2 to 6 on the score. WSCR Chicago, WBMX HD2 Chicago, and Odyssey Sports Station. Bellinger leadoff single. Cody 2 for 2. Here's Christopher Morrell. Taking a breaking ball in there for a strike. How about the green ivy for the first time visible on yeah. the outfield wall, Ron? Well, while we were gone, it, was, it warmed up here in Chicago some. We had some days in the 70s, so no surprise that we get a little green ivy popping through. I would say about 20% coverage, maybe 15 to 20% somewhere in there, but it does look beautiful. And with each passing day... You'll get a little bit more. It'll be a while before it's fully bloomed and blossomed. Here comes the 0-2 from the big left hand. Low and inside to Morrell. Yeah, we got a guest here in the booth today. How about this? Dennis Curry, 80 years old today, and he's here as a guest of the Cubs and all of us. His son Brian is a buddy, and so they got a, a contingent here, but he is in the booth today. Happy birthday, Dennis. Dennis said he is available for pinch hitting duty later on. Well, you never know. You know, it's one of those days the wind's blowing out at Wrigley. Everybody wants to grab a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the 2-2 two -two to Morrell. Low and inside. 3-2. and two. Let's keep an eye on the runner, Bellinger, here. Cubs lead 3-0. Nobody out. Third inning. Bellinger's a good base runner. Christopher's done a good job of laying off that slider down and in in this at bat. Huck is ready and delivers. The runner not going. That's going to be ball four, low and inside. We talked earlier about A.J. Puck and the traffic on the bases has been just too many, too many guys on base in his innings. 26 men in less than 11 innings of work. 26 men had been on base against him. And we've kind of seen some evidence, Ron, why. He's, he's simply wild and unable to put the ball yep. where he wants. Yeah, it's it's unreal. Mel Stottlemyre, pitching coach, going out to the mound to talk. And he's kind of talking to the whole group like we've got to get this together here. You know, you're, you start putting this many men on base again, one swing and a bat, and you're almost out of the game. Designated hitters for the Cubs, sponsored by BBQ Authority. Visit BBQ Authority in Lyle. And the base on balls. Let's see if somebody opens the door now. We hear that wind rushing through. Sponsored by North Shore Adult Diapers. Reassuringly strong protection for even the heaviest control problems. I just barely heard it. Visit NorthShore.com. Swanson had a run scoring double his first time. Here's the pitch on the way to Dansby. Fastball strike, 0 and 1. Cubs coming off a very good road trip, 5 and 4 out west. Here comes the 0 1. Swanson takes low and outside. I, I got on the plane and I told a couple of people there have been a lot of road trips where we wish we had been five and four or four and three going out west it just doesn't happen that no, often. it really doesn't there it's just tough to win series on the west coast and the cubs aren't the only team this applies to almost every midwest and east coast team. every team i've ever played for yeah. or against when you go out west we all talk about it. it's just time zone travel there's a lot that plays into it and it's just an advantage for the teams in the west I played for the Dodgers, and when teams would come out, you knew that was worth one win a series. Dansby lines one foul down the left field line. 
Ron, you mentioned the, the time zone change. It's a two-hour change. Now, when the Cubs go east, it's a one-hour change. Now, I don't know why, but it seems like it's much more than just one more hour than when we go to the east coast as far as the change of time. It, it seems like it's four or five, and I don't know why. I couldn't agree more. I, the sleep patterns, I mean, we, we talked about it on the air when we get out to San Diego. You know, you wake up so much early. You, you know, your day is just so different when you go out west, two-hour difference, than you do when you go out east. It just doesn't seem like, you know, it really has much effect on you. Cubs lead 3 nothing. Nobody out. First and second. A.J. Puck delivers. Swanson takes way outside. 3-2. and two. Now, he doesn't want to walk another man here. I say Dansby gets a pitch to hit. What do you think? He should, absolutely. You just got to, you know, for Puck, he's hit 56 pitches. He is not trying to miss, but that last pitch and 2-2 missed well out of the zone away. Bellinger leads at second. Morell away from first. Swanson waiting for A.J. Puck. The big six-foot, seven-inch left-hander deals way outside. Ball four. No activity in the bullpen yet, but there might be in a moment or two at this pace. Ian Happ batting with the bases loaded. The Cubs have a chance to build up a sizable lead. Yeah, I got to believe there's guys scurrying in that Marlins bullpen right now, and Ian with a swing of the bat and driving one into a gap could really put a lot of distance between the Cubs and the Marlins here. Infield back, the pitch to Ian is a strike. Cubs baseball brought to you by Stella Blue Coffee and Barstool Big Cat. Thanks to both of them for being the official coffee sponsor of Cubs Radio and providing us with a great assortment of coffee. Here's the 0-1. Yeah, pits one in the air to right, slicing toward foul territory, and that ball's going to be out of play. Foul. So we said all the balls hit to right field are really going to carry, but if a right-hander hits it and slices it that way, it's also going to push it towards foul territory. So you really got to hit the ball to straight right if you're going to keep it fair here at Wrigley. Bases full of Cubs. Bellinger at third, Morell at second, Swanson at first. Hap takes in the dirt. Nice save by Fortes. One and two. But Stella Blue Coffee. Yeah, that's, we, we drink plenty of that out on the West Coast with the change of time. Big Cat Blend, Electric Avenue, positive vibes. Great taste. Here comes the one-two now from Puck. Swing and a miss, and Hap is out number one. One gone. Garrett Cooper, the batter. Cooper with power. He can really do some damage against his former team. Well, and the one thing about Cooper that we found out, and we kind of knew when he was a Marlin playing against him, that he has he's a great, big, strong guy. But he has great power to right and right center. And with Puck fading that fastball away, we'll see if Cooper shoots one the other way. First pitch strike, nothing and one. But thanks to Stella Blue Coffee, time to take back your mornings. And they also help homeless pets in need with every purchase you make. Great purpose, better coffee, Stella Blue. Cooper takes a change up low and away, one and one. I was Electric Avenue, the dark roast today. We needed a little extra, little something, something this morning to get us going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Infield is back. Cooper trying to deliver. He swings and fouls it at the plate, one and two. Cooper looks like he's trying to hit the ball to right center field. But Puck, in this at bat, has done a good job of getting the ball in the zone, but inside to Cooper. Cooper, in his career with the bases loaded, has always been tough, hitting 375 in 32 career at bats with the bags jammed. Now the one-two on the way. And Cooper hits a little looper, shallow right center. That's going to fall in there for a base hit. One run is in. Morrell stops at third. Bellinger comes in to score. Cubs lead four to nothing. Garrett Cooper driving in the run. Still only one away, and the Cubs now lead four to nothing. Well, they stay inside on Cooper, and he just muscles this ball. 
out over the infield, just a little bloop single. But when you're swinging the bat the right way, the barrel gets led by the hands. The ball jams you, but you at least hit the ball in the middle the other way. You got a chance for a base knock, and that's exactly what Cooper did for the base hit. His fifth run batted in. Nick Madrigal at the plate. And he'll hit a bouncer toward third. The throw's going to go to second. They get one, and the throw to first. Not in time. Another run scores. I thought Rivera might try to come home on that ground ball, but the third baseman thought they could get the around-the-horn twin killing. They do get the middleman at second base, but a run comes in to score, and the Cubs lead 5 to nothing. Yeah, this is a ball that's hit, and, and once again, you know, the Marlins... When you, when you start watching some of these plays, you know, bloop, single, drives in a run. Nobody can get to it. This ball not hit well, but hit right in the hole between short and third. Rivera running hard to his left has really only one shot of throwing maybe to second base to get that out, but you can't turn two. Cubs lead five to nothing. Amaya drives one in the air, deep center field. That goes Chisholm, back near the wall. It's off the fence and bouncing back toward the infield. Two runs are going to score. Cubs lead seven to nothing on a double by Miguel Amaya. Just to the left of dead center, off the wall, Chisholm got too close to the wall. The ball hit the ivy covered bricks and bounced sharply back past him, rolling back toward the infield. And the Cubs have scored four in the inning and lead by a touchdown and an extra point. Seven to nothing. Now Chisholm misplayed the first ball hit to him in center. And now this one he misplays by getting too close to the wall. And it has been a tough day so far for the Marlins. Madrigal showed a good burst of speed. Of course, he's running all the way from first with two down. But he scampered around those bases. Here is Nico Horner now. The eighth man to bat in the inning. Nico has already doubled twice. Scored a run and driven in one. Amaya now with eight runs batted in. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Hit in the air to center. Pretty well hit. But this one is going to be playable for Chisholm. And he makes the catch. But it's a prosperous third inning in which the Cubs score four times. Four runs, three hits, two walks, one left. How about the birthday boy for 80 years old? He threw up a four spot for the Cubs. Happy birthday, Doug. are built to keep workers in the zone and off the bench. Bosch Tools, what hard workers deserve. League leaders are sponsored by the Village of New Lenox, leading the way in residential and economic development. Jose Altuve leads the majors with a 388 batting average. 
Marcel Ozuna and Mike Trout tied for the home run lead, both with eight, and Ozuna leading the league in RBIs with 23. Pat? All right, Zach, very good. We go to inning number four. Luis Arise leading it off. Left-handed batter and a very good hitter. Here's a good trivia question for you. Who are the two current active big league ball players who have won batting titles in both leagues? And I'm bringing it up because Arise is one of them. Deep yeah. drive left center. Back goes Bellinger. Makes the catch. Cody turned one way, then had to turn the other as he went back and stayed on that ball and made the catch. Not an easy play, out number one. So Luis Arise is one of them, Ron. He won a batting title with the Minnesota Twins mm -hmm. in the American League, and he was the batting champion last year when he led both leagues with a 354 average. Luis Arise. Here's Brian De La Cruz. There's one other guy. I don't know that he's played a lot so far this season. I know he, I think he started the year on the injured list and might still be on there. He is a, he is currently on an American League roster. Okay. And a former Cub, briefly. De La Cruz waits. Here's the pitch. Swing on a miss. But this guy has been a batting champion in both leagues. He and Luis Arise are the only two yep. current guys of which that can be said. Dana Cruz with one away. Cubs lead 7-0 fourth inning. Tyone just missing outside. Tyone run, uh, considering his time away, looks very sharp today. He throwing really does. strikes and he's throwing rhythmically and pretty good command. The command of his breaking pitches too. I mean, that last pitch just missed. He really hasn't thrown... A non-competitive pitch. Fly ball, left center field, deep, back toward the outfield wall, and this ball is going to be in the basket for a home run. Brian De La Cruz with a solo home run into left center. And the Marlins are on the board. The Cub lead is now 7-1, to one, his fourth of the year. Well, and all of a sudden, too, timing is everything. The wind has shifted a little bit just right now where it was blowing out the straightaway center instead of towards the right field corner. And this is a fastball up and in, and it just makes it to the basket. His belly jumps up thinking he may have a play, but it lands in the basket for a home run. 11th RBI for De La Cruz. As we said, his fourth home run. The Cub lead is now 7-1. to one. And Jazz Chisholm Jr. swings and misses. Here's a hint now, the guy we're trying mm -hmm. to think of. I don't know his first name. He goes by two letters and then his last name. Okay. And there's your clue. I know it. Go ahead. D.J. LeMay. D.J. Yeah. LeMay, you mm -hmm. batting champ with the Yanks, Yanks previously yeah. with Colorado. Mm -hmm. Here comes the 1-1. Line to right, down the line, curling. That's going to be a fair ball, bouncing into the corner. Chisholm racing around second. He's thinking two and holding on as the throw comes in. So the Marlins back-to-back -back extra base knocks. Cubs still lead seven to one. A man at second, one away, and Josh Bell coming up. And a little slider down and in, and Chisholm just drops the head of the bat down on it. Pretty nice swing. D.J. LeMayu, yeah, the Yankees really hoping to get him back to really kind of solidify, you know, a couple of these spots. He, he moved positions to play third and to do some different things for the Yankees, but well, they, not that they're missing anybody in the lineup because they're off to a great start, but then you had a batting two-time batting champ. That really helps the program. We saw LeMayu a year ago. You could tell he was battling some issues, Ron. Mm -hmm. He just was not 100%. He didn't look right. And again, on the injury list to begin this season. Seems to me he's had some back issues, possibly. Hand issues, maybe, also. Yep. 0-2 on Josh Bell. But 
going back a few years, DJ LeMayu, mm. he would bat five times. He'd get the average between about three and four hard hit balls yep. every single day. There was not a spot where you could pitch him. Curveball is down low to Josh Bell. He's going to start a minor league rehab assignment today for the Yankees double A team. He's coming back from a non displaced fracture of his right foot. Right foot, did you say? Correct. Okay. Now the one two to Josh Bell, the former pirate. And Bell hits one off the hands on the ground to first. Scooped up by Cooper. He'll take that to the bag. Good pitch by Tyone. That had to sting. So you're not only upset because you make an out, but now you're to compound your frustration. You get the stinging hands as well. That'll put you in a bad mood. Yeah, and, 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 and then you might have to go back to home plate and pick up your thumb. Because now... <laughs> Those are, that's how it feels. Like you hit that ball about three or four inches from your hands, and it feels like you just knocked your thumb clean off. Jesus yeah. Sanchez will take a strike. Needless to say, it's not a good feeling. No. <laughs> I will take your word on that one. Sanchez robbed on a brilliant play by Nico Horner his first time. Swings at a changeup, doesn't get it, nothing in two. What's on your mind here, Ron? Well, you got a couple options now when you get ahead in the counts. You can elevate a fastball and see if you can get Sanchez, who's hitting just, just under 180, to chase the high heater. Or you can spin another breaking ball. He was well out in front of the last curveball. Big right-hander, Jamison Tyone, ready in the strike two pitch. On the way to Sanchez, very high for a ball. Miguel Amaya doing the catching. Cubs looking for their 12th win against seven losses. Here's the one-two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Inning over, Tyone gets the strikeout, his fourth of the day. Strikeouts by Cubs pitchers. Sponsored by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers. Own every mile in a brand new Hyundai. It's on to the bottom of inning number four. Town scoreboard is fueled by Sitco Dry Clean Gasoline. When you start with Sitco, you're good to go. The only game around the majors currently in progress is the one here at Wrigley Field. Bottom four, it's the Cubs seven and the Marlins one. Also a reminder, Parkins and Spiegel talk Cubs baseball and Chicago sports every weekday afternoon from 2 to 6 on 670 The Score and the Odyssey app. Huh? 
Zach, thank you. Bottom of the fourth inning. Patrick Wisdom first up against the new Marlin pitcher, Declan Cronin. C-R-O-N-I-N. Just like the Hall of Famer Joe Cronin. Here's the 0-1. Hit in the air to right. Pretty well hit. Back goes Sanchez. Near the track. Now comes in and makes the catch. Wisdom retired. One away. The Cubs chasing. A.J. Puck scoring seven times in the first three innings. And leading 7-1 to one as Cody Bellinger steps in. And I thought when that ball left the bat, it might have a chance. And really ended up, you know, about 10 feet in front of the track end, right? First pitch missing. Opposing pitching changes. Sponsored by Sloan, the official water efficiency partner of the Chicago Cubs. And... Leader in smart water and commercial restroom solutions. Learn more at Sloan.com. Fastball strike to Bellinger. Cody two for two, a pair of singles, drove in a run. Now with 13 runs batted in. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Bellinger hits one in the air to left. It's playable for Gordon. And he'll squeeze that one for out number two. And the fourth inning is sponsored by Wintrust, the exclusive home of Cubs checking. Cubs baseball also brought to you by Work Zone Safety. They are there whenever a pitch clock violation takes place. That's powered by Work Zone Safety. Make sure you follow Work Zone signs. It's not a game. Inside the Morrell, ball one. Parkins and Spiegel talk Cubs baseball and Chicago sports every weekday afternoon from 2 to 6 on 670. The score in the Odyssey. Run. Very efficient debut this yep. season for Tyone. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Bouncing ball hit to short. Fielded by Anderson to second for one. A rise to first in time. That's a double play. It ends the fifth inning, but not before the Cubs put another run on the board. They've got an 8-1 lead over the Marlins. Heading to the sixth on the score. And the Cubs Radio Network. Catch every moment of every game all season long. Home run inning contestant is Neil Ivick from Plainfield, who will win the Woodman's gift card jackpot of $50. If a North Sider hits a home run this inning, you can enter with a QR code at any Chicago area Woodman's. Good luck, Neil. Today's Woodman's home run inning contestant, service and savings. That's Woodman's. Huh? Keegan Thompson, who did some excellent clutch pitching on Monday night in Phoenix against the Diamondbacks in the Cubs 3-2 win in 11 innings is now in relief today 
Good job by Jamison Tyone, his first time out of the shoot. One run and three hits. Good control by Tyone. The only blemish, a home run allowed to Brian De La Cruz back in the fourth inning. Luis Arise leads off the sixth inning. Keegan Thompson now the pitcher and misses outside. It's 2-0. Oh. Arise, De La Cruz, and Chisholm. Cubs pitching changes. Here's a fastball strike. Cubs pitching changes sponsored by James Hardy Building Products. Siding with the Cubs, James Hardy. Cubs offense went to work early in this one if you're just joining us. In fact, the Cubs have scored in four of the five innings. They got two in the first. Run scoring single by Bellinger, RBI double by Swanson. They added a run in the second inning. Nico Horner drove it in with a two-base hit. The big inning was the third when the Cubs scored four times. A rise pulls one foul past first. Nick Madrigal hit into a fielder's choice and won in that third inning after Garrett Cooper had singled to drive in a run. Miguel Amaya with a two-run double. Cubs led 7-0 at that juncture. Here's a swing and a ground ball to third. Off the glove of Wisdom. And it rolls into shallow left field. E5. Wisdom now playing third base. Patrick came in from right field. Mike Talkman stays in the game after his pinch hit RBI single. Talkman playing right field. Wisdom now at third base. Wisdom kind of acted as if he jammed something almost as he went after that ground ball. He appears to be okay. Kind of looking at the glove. I used to do that too. It's, it's the glove's fault. It's not my fault. Here is a breaking ball outside. What's wrong with this glove anyway? I don't know, but for 17 years I tried to figure that part out. <laughs> <laughs> One ball and no strikes. <laughs> the pitch by Thompson swinging a foul back one and one. That play that was just hit to wisdom, that is the toughest play for a third baseman to make and to, to recognize a left-handed hitter hits the ball sharply low on the ground to your right side towards the towards the line. It's just a tough pitch. It's a tough ball to react to, and it's a tough ball to get a read on. It's just not an easy play. De La Cruz at the plate. E5, a rise reaching on the error. De La Cruz backs away. De La Cruz homered back in the fourth inning for the Marlins' only run of the game. Cubs on top, 8-1. to one. Breeze still blowing out toward right on this beautiful, sunny spring day. Fastball is high, three and one. Oh, we really didn't think there'd be many balls even come close to going out of the park to left. De La Cruz hit one. He hit it right at that video board in left field and might have got a little help knocking down the wind. Yeah, you're right. You don't expect balls hit to left or left center with that win. But there's been a noticeable difference ever since the construction of that video board and left. It's about, uh, what, 50 feet high, 90 feet wide yep. on top of the bleachers out in left center. And it has a distinct effect on the wind. I don't think there's any doubt about it, Ron. Yeah, I would definitely agree. 3-2 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Got him on a good high fastball. Thompson has a good arm. That was 93 MPH and in on his hands. Nice pitch. Now it's great to see Keegan back in the big leagues. He had a really rough year last year just health-wise and trying to get back to the big leagues. And, you know, you're really happy for him. He had a good spring and, and really throwing the ball well since he's come back to joining the big league club. Jazz Chisholm Jr. will take a fastball high. Cubs lead 8-1, to one, sixth inning. Strikeouts by Cubs pitcher sponsored by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers. Own every mile in a brand new Hyundai. A 
Now the set for the 1-0. Infielders looking for a ground ball. Here's a swing and a miss by Chisholm. I've often wondered, I've been meaning to look it up and just never have gotten around to it. Is Jazz his real first name? J-A-Z-Z. -Z. Breaking ball in for a strike to Jazz. <laughs> Pretty cool name, actually. Mm -hmm. Today's attendance is 29,595. 29,595. Pretty good audience on this Friday. Lots of sunshine. Cubs winning a lot of games early in the season. Trying to go to 12-7. and seven. Here comes the 2-2 from Keegan Thompson to Chisholm. Swing and a miss. Jazz is singing the blues as he heads back to the dugout. Two down, and here's Josh Bell. Well, that off day really did you some good, didn't it? <laughs> Top of your game today, partner. <laughs> Two down, here's Josh Bell. You're not in the Hall of Fame for nothing, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Certainly hope not. Here's no, the no, I, yeah. pitch on the way from There's millions Keegan. here in Chicago that would agree with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Zach was kind enough to look up the full name of Jazz Chisholm. Go ahead, Zach. You did the work. I'll let you... <laughs> Had the delight of saying his name. See, that's a Hall of Fame move right there. See, there you go. go because ahead, I can't pronounce <laughs> the first name. I, I've exactly never seen it before. Point. It's not yeah, my job. Yeah, Zach, yeah, take yeah. it away. He's from the Bahamas, and I apologize to Jazz Chisholm Jr. if I'm saying this wrong. Jasardo Prince Hermes Arrington Jazz Chisholm Jr. is the full name. Could you say that again, please? Hey, I would <laughs> like it one more time. And a little slower this time, yeah, please. You guys heard it. Jasardo, J-A-S-A-R-D-O. So right after you read that first word, mm -hmm. you know why he goes by jazz. Here comes the 2-1. It's taken low and inside by Josh Bell. Mm -hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with Jasardo, but... No. And then Prince. And then Hermes. H-E-R-M-I-S. Could go by Hermie. He could. Mm-hmm. Hermie Chisholm, Jazz. I'd, I'd stick with Jazz if I was still, him. Still a Jazz guy? If there's an option. Yeah. Here's the 3-1. Swinging a foul back by Bell. And then Arrington. Uh -huh. A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N would be one of his... He's a guy with actually three middle names. Which makes him very uh -huh. distinctive. Mm -hmm. And then the last name of Chisholm. And of course you got to add Junior on the end. Taken high by Josh Bell, and that's ball four. Two men on, two down. The inning should be over. Cubs lead by a score of eight to one. And the batter is Jesus Sanchez. Now, now for Keegan, you just got to get yourself back in the zone. The one thing in games like this where you've got a big lead, and we found this out on the West Coast, walks can really help a team get back in the game because then you get a couple men on one swing of the bat, and you're getting into the game. Here's a drive down the left field line, slicing and going foul. 29,595 here today. We'll see how we did in the Benny's Beverage Depot attendance game a bit later on. The sixth inning. By the way, the first out in this sixth inning. That is sponsored by Xfinity. Stream sports with Xfinity. Because it's only live once. Keegan Thompson, tall, strong right-hander with a black glove, fires 0-1. Soft one-hop line drive to second, glove by Horner, throws to first. In time. No runs, no hits, an error. A walk and a couple of men left and a little bit of jazz mixed in. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Cubs eight, Marlins one. This is the score and the Cubs.
three with an RBI and a run scored after he had six hits in the three-game series in Arizona earlier this week. So it looks like he's back on track, Ron. Yeah, and you, and you look, what really got Nico back on track, Pat, was the line drives the other way. He started shooting the ball the other way, and then when he was pulling the ball, he was pulling the hanging breaking ball. Here's a drive toward right center, playable for Chisholm. And Jazz makes the catch, one down, and here's Patrick Wisdom. That ball, another line drive pretty well struck by Nico, and that's, once again, to right center field. Nico also had a game-winning hit, I think the Monday night game mm -hmm. in Phoenix, that little soft single to right, but just being able to get a game-winning hit has got to give you a little bit of confidence moving forward, yeah, right? Yeah, you're feeling good about yourself, no doubt. And on those game winners, you don't care how it looks, as long as it gets the job done and drives in the the tally, it'll look like a screaming line drive in the box score. Absolutely. Here's the 0-1 to Wisdom. Look out. Patrick sits down. That pitch high and tight. Crowd reacting. Birch Smith is the new man on the mound for Miami. B-U-R-C-H Smith. I don't think I need to spell that. Here comes the 1-1. Pitch to Wisdom. Popped up, right side, in the sun. A rise will give way to the right fielder coming in, and Sanchez, with that red glove, makes the catch in short right field for out number two. Cubs lead 8-1, to one, sixth inning, and it brings up Bellinger. It's a good play by Sanchez. This ball skied in the short right field. A rise going out. He's struggling to see this ball right in the sun. And Sanchez really hustling from deep right field, busts it in and makes a catch. Bellinger two for three, drove in a run, scored a run. Lots of contributors to the Cubs' attack today. You can almost bank on it, Ron, when the weather starts getting a little warmer, that your best hitters will start to hit yep. better. Yep. They will heat up, there is no doubt. We had some abysmal weather in the last homestand, especially in that series against Colorado. Ooh. Cubs still scored runs. 2-0 is in there for a strike to Cody. 2-1. Six, seven, eight runs a game. It was pretty amazing. Yep, I think that's the best offense that I've ever seen a Cubs team have in bad weather for a full homestand, ever. Can't, can't remember when the temperature and the wind chill is in the high 20s to score four, five, or six yeah. runs a game is just unheard of. Cold, rainy, snowy. I mean, we had it all. Yeah. Now the 2-2. Two -two. Bellinger pulls a bouncer foul toward first. The amazing part. How about, you know, I, I had a chance to see some of the grounds crew guys today. How about them keeping the field playable? I could, that was, you know, that's... It's a miracle to be able to still play on the field after all the weather we had and continue to play those games and didn't miss a ball game. Now the 2-2. Bellinger drives one in the air, left field deep. Back goes Gordon on the warning track. He'll make the catch. The wind is blowing the other way. On a different day, that ball might sail on out of here. As it is, it's caught by Gordon on the track. We go to the seventh inning. It's the cut.
Ziegler Subaru of Kenosha. Shop online at ZieglerSubaruKenosha.com. It's on to inning number seven. Alexander Canario, the new left fielder, replacing Ian Happ. Tim Anderson batting for the Marlins, facing right-hander Keegan Thompson. Cubs lead by seven runs. Doubleheader tomorrow. 120 for game one. 640 for the nightcap. Neither team has named a starter for either game tomorrow. I think there's a pretty good idea that both teams have for their starting pitchers, but they're waiting. And Hap got taken out of the ball game after last inning, and we just got a shot and a monitor of him being talked to by Nick Frangella and Craig Council. So I wonder. Trainer. Yeah. Nick, the head trainer for the Cubs, and you hope that Happer is okay. He got taken out of the game, so that is one of those things that you're hoping he's okay. Trying to think where he may have banged himself up a little bit. He did walk and was a base runner in the fifth inning, talking about Ian Happ. I don't recall any plays in the outfield run where he may have run into a wall or had to make a sliding play of some kind. Swing and a miss, strike three. Good slider by Keegan Thompson. He gets the strikeout of Tim Anderson. That's out number one. The first out in the inning, sponsored by Xfinity. Stream sports with Xfinity because it's only live once. Here's Nick Gordon batting and taking high for a ball. I was thinking with a doubleheader tomorrow, Craig Council might like to rest. Mm hmm Maybe one or two more guys also because you got a full day tomorrow. That's uh, that day night twin killing. That's no joke. Yeah. No, you, a lot of baseball tomorrow. It's a whole day of being at the ballpark. Now the 1-1 one -one to Gordon. Hit on the ground off the hands. Good pitch by Keegan. Nico Horner makes a routine play to first. Score that one 4-3. to three. Two down and the batter is Emmanuel Rivera. Another good pitch, just as you said, Pat, right in on the hands, a little cutter. Perfect pitch by Keegan. The key when it's inside is up underneath the hands, as you pointed out. If you can get that ball right under the hands, it's really tough to get the barrel to that pitch. Here's the next pitch in there for a call strike. Cubs playing in game one of a nice seven-game homestand before they hit the road to Boston, where they'll be a week from tonight, Fenway Park. And then on to play the Mets. Three games in each park starting next Friday night. I was reading about the Red Sox today, knowing that we were going to be playing them mm -hmm. soon. They've played 20 games already. Here's the 1-1. If you want to know what it's like in baseball... This tells it all, I think. They've played 20 games. They are 10 and 10. They began the season, the Red Sox did, with a 10-game road trip, and they went 7-3. and three. Wow. So they came home flying high and then just wrapped up a 10-game homestand going 3-7. and seven. Mm. Go figure. Yep. Swing and a miss, strike three. Rivera is gone. One, two, three for Keegan Thompson. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. Cubs eight, Marlins one. And the stretch is coming up. And that is sponsored by Volvo Plug-In Hybrid Vehicles. Electric cars with a backup plan. Visit your local retailer to learn more. Time for the stretch. Here at Wrigley. All right, Cubs and Bears fans. Let me hear you. A one. A two. A three. Take me out to the ball game. Two. 
restructure out at the old ball game. This is your home for Cubs baseball all season long. The Chicago Cubs Radio Network. No matter where you're headed, Sitco is a good place to start. Whether you're off to the ballpark, dog park, or amusement park, driving range or drive-in theater, Saturday morning soccer or Sunday brunch, Sitco top tier try clean gas. First up for the Cubs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Cubs lead 8-1, to one, out hitting Miami 9-3. to three. Morrell has grounded out twice, once into a double play. He's also walked and scored a run. Here's the next pitch, swung on and missed. Looking at the starting nine for the Cubs today, this is what a manager and a hitting coach loves to see. The only guy in the lineup that has not either scored a run or driven in one would be Ian Happ. And he, he struck out a couple of times and had a walk. Everyone else in the starting nine run has either scored a run yep. or driven one in. That will work. Foul on the uh, last pitch. Morell may have chipped the end of the bat. I think he's yep. looking for some new lumber to be brought out to him. What did you ever do with the bats that were unusable, either broken or chipped? What did you, did you give them away to charity? Yeah, or? yeah what happens is a lot of times the team themselves will, will, comp, will not confiscate, but take those bats and they will use them for charity, you know, put them in a pro shop, things like that. And then there were some that I would just take home with me and I'd give them to some kids in the neighborhood or, you know, things like that or, or sign them and sure. yeah, give them to charity, absolutely. Morell fouls it away, one and two. Cubs leading eight to one. Beautiful spring day at Wrigley. We thank you for joining us. Cubs trying to climb five games above 500 as Morell fouls it back. And this would be the high point of the season if they can get there. And the pitch by Smith pulled on the ground to third to his left gloving is Rivera comes up throwing to get him and that's out number one. Pretty good play by the third baseman. One away and here's Dansby Swanson. Christopher hits this ball sharply to the left side right in the hole but Rivera he showed pretty good range on that play to go get that ball in the hole. Cubs baseball brought to you by Circa Resort and Casino. Get ready for the time of your life. CircaLasVegas.com First pitch in there for a call strike to Dansby Swanson. Dansby with a perfect day. A double, a walk, a single. He's driven in one and scored two. Pokes it foul off to the right out of play. Made a great play in the second inning, too, on that low line drive up the middle. Nico made a great play up the middle, and then right after that, I think the very next pitch, Dansby made a great play. Swanson always looks calm when he's playing this game, both, I would say, with the leather and at bat. He just never looks uptight. I don't know if you can teach that, Ron. The one-two pitch swung on and missed strike three, and that's out number one. Uh, number two. Two down in the inning. Here comes Alexander Canario. Well, there's a reason why he's pretty relaxed playing. He's a pretty good player. 
that he's, does help. He's, he's got a lot that of That does ability. keep your blood pressure yeah, low. It does, yeah. I I would assume he he's probably been the best player in his team league everywhere he's been since he was about nine or eight. Number one pick in the draft. Right. Drafted, I believe, yep. by Arizona yep, that's initially. Correct. Out of Vanderbilt. Right. Some, some people in Arizona were talking about that the other day. Here's a pitch outside for a ball. One and one on Canario. Alexander, let's see if he can make the most of his at bat. He'll take a strike in the count one and two. All the other big league teams playing later on tonight. So if you're in your car and listening, wherever you might be, we thank you for joining us. And the one, two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And it's a one, two, three inning for Birch Smith. It's on to the eighth inning. Cubs eight. Marlins won. This is the score and the Cubs radio network. Chicago Cubs. And the eighth inning is sponsored by Cars for Kids, 877 Cars for Kids. It's Cars of the K to donate your car today. Partner? Colton Brewer is the new pitcher. He has had previous big league experience. He's on now for the Cubs on the mound. He's pitched for San Diego, the Red Sox, and the Yankees, I believe, is what Zach was telling us earlier. I would have thought Milwaukee with a name like Brewer would have made sense, but mm -hmm. I was a little disappointed to hear that he's never pitched for them. In there for a strike to Nick Fortes. Fortes, the number nine hitter, bounces one out to third to his left wisdom, reaches down, gloves it, running throw to first to get him. Good play by Patrick. You had to make that play a few thousand times in your career, Ron. Yep, I have, and that's a nice play by Patrick going hard to his left. The thing that you're always taught as a third baseman, and when you're going to your left, take as much as you can get. Because if you cut that ball off, it's going to be a much easier play for you to get the out at first than it will be the shortstop. That is for sure. Here's a pitch low and inside to Luis Arise. Let's see how we did in the Benny's Beverage Depot attendance game. If you can't find it at Benny's, it's probably not worth drinking. The actual figure today, 29,595. And the winner is the maestro, our engineer, Paul Zerang. Wow. Paul's guest, 27,922. Thanks to Benny's for being a great, great sponsor for many moons. Luis Arise swings and fouls it back. One and two on the leadoff hitter. Arise, nothing for three today. And Cubs Pitching Change is sponsored by James Hardy Building Products, siding with the Cubs. One away in the inning, that first out, sponsored by Xfinity, because it's only live once. 
Stream sports with Xfinity. And now the one two. Swinging a foul back. We'll do it again. In the ninth inning, Ron Coomer will be naming the toast of the game ball player. So please stay tuned for that. Certainly some candidates.
Here's the 2 1. Now you'd much rather fail to come through. And Walter O'Malley decided the next year, then 1957, that that's it. They're going to move to Los Angeles. Yeah. So they what they started to do was to play some of their home games over in New Jersey, as that might be a possible place to build the new stadium, as, right. as I understand it. Here's the one-one pitch fouled away, but it, it does seem odd to not play one of your home games in a famous ballpark like yeah. Ebbets Field, but that kind of indicates that things were starting to sour between the Dodgers and the city of Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah then, right? And then everybody, you know, obviously the Dodgers moved to Los Angeles, but, you know, that was, there were thousands of fans that just couldn't believe they left Brooklyn. And even, you know, to, to this day, you still hear people who had relatives who love the Brooklyn Dodgers and they still are remorseful and angry at the Dodgers yeah. for leaving town. Swing and a miss, strike three. Wisdom is gone and so are the Cubs. We go to the ninth inning. It's the Cubs eight and the Marlins one. This is the score. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. Brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Pat? Colton Brewer, right-hander for the Cubs. On the mound for this ninth inning. Cubs on top, 8-1. to one. Jazz Chisholm Jr. takes outside. They count one ball and one strike. Time for the toast of the game run. Sponsored by Benny's Beverage Depot. Gonna let you name the toast of the game player for the Cubs after this next pitch. Benny's is the official champagne provider of the Chicago Cubs. If you can't find it at Benny's, it's just a shame. <laughs> How about that, Michael? Michael Ben Steenla. <laughs> Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Little bouncer to the left of the mound. Barehanded by Brewer. Has no play. Barehanded dropped it as he moved to the third base side of the mound. Tough play. That's going to have to be a base hit. Yep. No, and the only player that had a shot was Brewer. And could not come up with the barehand play, so it will be a hit. Chisholm gets his second hit of the day. Here's Josh Bell. What do you like, Ron? How about toast to the game ball player? How about the guy who had his first big league game today, right? How about Jamison Tyone? Five innings, three hits, gave up one run, had four punch outs in the five innings, no walks, and was really in control and in command of his pitches all game long. How about Jamo being the toast of the game player today? That's a very good call. Big welcome back to him. Cubs need him big time to perform, and he came through today uh, glowing fashion here in his first start. 
Josh Bell batting, swings away and fouls it away. And base hit by Chisholm, his second. The Marlins have four for the day. Colton Brewer worked a perfect eighth inning. Gives up the leadoff infield single here in the ninth. And now a changeup is low and away. Two and one. Still bright and beautiful here at Wrigley. We know a lot of you are in your cars heading home after a long week of work. So just take it easy going home. Here's the 2-1. Swing and a miss. Two and two. And the hardest working player of the game. Sponsored by Bosch Power Tools. What hard workers deserve. And how about the Ansby Swanson? He was on base three times. Scored a couple runs, drove in a run with a double in the first, and then a couple nice plays on defense. So Dansby will be our hardest working player by Bosch Power Tools. And the next pitch bounced to third. Wisdom has it, goes to second. They get one over to first. Not in time. Dansby Swanson did not seem to have a real good grip on that ball when he cut loose the throw. The Cubs do get the lead runner on an unusual six, or rather, Five to six. Third baseman to the shortstop covering second. Craig Council out to visit with Vic Carapaza. Well, what happened is the runner Chisholm runs through the base. He does not slide, but he clips Dansby as he's going past Dansby. Yep. And in the leg, and, and Council saying, you know, what do we got here? So I, I guess he got. The answer there, they may take a look at this. Yeah, the runner Chisholm never slid, Ron. He ran, mm -hmm. ran right through second and ended up in shallow left field. And as you say, he made contact with the back foot of Dansby yeah. Swanson as he was preparing to set himself for the throw to first. I've never seen interference called on a runner for failing to slide, but I guess you could, couldn't you? Yep, you sure could. And why wouldn't Chisholm be sliding on that play? I, I don't know that either. I'm not exactly sure, and I, I really don't know what happened here. I'm... Yeah, it's it's kind of an odd play. I, I was not anticipating Chisholm to run through the bag on that play, and Managers' challenges, instant replays. They're taking a second look. A second opinion is always a good idea. Get yours at Northwestern Medicine. And while we're waiting for the replay to be looked at and decided upon, we can tell you that stolen bases by the Cubs, for every stolen base this season, a Toro Tire will make a donation to Keeping Families Covered. A Toro Tire. All Cubs stolen bases sponsored by Atoro Tire. Find your local Atoro dealer at Atoro.com. After review, the, fall, uh, the call on the field is confirmed. There was no violation at second base. The runner is out. Chicago loses their challenge. Okay, now let's see. Out was the call at second. The runner, the batter runner, will stay at first. That's Bell. Yeah, the play will go five to six, which is kind of an odd play. But because of the positioning on the field where Dansby was playing behind the bag. Jesus Sanchez swings and misses. I was a little confused about his explanation in saying the man is out. We knew he was out. Right. We were wondering if that would be a double play That's because correct. of the interference with the shortstop. That's That was not really discussed. Well, it's not uh, of earth-shattering importance. It is an 8-1 to one ball game. One away, top of the ninth inning. Jesus Sanchez will look at a strike from Colton Brewer. And that's strike three call. And that's out number two. And all of a sudden, the Marlins are down to their last chance. The first out, by the way, in this ninth inning, sponsored by Xfinity. You can stream sports with Xfinity because it's only live once. Zach wrote down some information here for me. Otto Lopez, the batter. The 
Marlins had a second baseman. We want to acknowledge him. Vidal Rohanel playing second for them in the last of the eighth inning. Early in the year when you haven't seen teams, invariably there are going to be mm -hmm. some brand new names. That one qualifies. Mm -hmm. And the 1-1 fouled away. The Marlins are down to their last strike. Fans are standing at Wrigley. Fans on the right side are in the sun. The bleachers are in the sun. All of the fans on the left side behind the third base dug out there in the shade. But the fans have enjoyed what they saw today. Here's a pitch down low. Cubs really did well in all phases, Ron. Great pitching, good hitting, some good defensive plays. What's not to like? Yeah, it's been a great game for the Cubs. Got to get one more out. But it has been a very nice ball game. Pitching, defense, offense. Line drive, base hit to left. Otto Lopez with a single to left. Bell stopping at second. And this ball game is not over just yet. Two on, two down. Cubs with a seven-run lead. And the batter is Nick Gordon. A little inside fastball just dropped ahead of the bat on that pitch. Hit a bullet to the left side. Please stay tuned for Zach Sademan's post-game show following immediately. Gordon swings and misses. The ball gets by the catcher. And runners advance to second and third. Bruce Levine of the score is down on the field. Actually not on the field itself. Umpires frown on that when you start wandering yeah. around in shallow left field yeah. during the game. I would agree. Although Bruce well respected, I'm sure they might let him get away with it. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> Here's the 0-1 to Nick Gordon. Swinging a base hit into left. This is going to drive in two. Opposite field two-run single for Nick Gordon. And the score now is 8-3. With two outs in the top of this ninth inning. Well, and that pass ball comes back to hurt. As line back-to-back -back line drive base hits. Drives in a couple. Tommy Hadovy to the mound to see about Colton Brewer. Again, a long day of baseball tomorrow. A double header between these two. We hope you can join us for both. Starting times, 120 for game one tomorrow. 120 and then 640 for the nighttime portion of the twin bill. So two separate ball games, two separate audiences. Cubs looking for win number 12 against seven losses. The Marlins in danger of falling to four and sixteen. Emmanuel Rivera, the batter. The pitch by Brewer, fouled away by Rivera. Hector Neris just starting to play light catch in the Cubs' bullpen, just in case another guy does get on, then he will get hot. But I would think he is just playing a little catch right now. Three hits in the inning against Brewer. Curve in the dirt, blocked by the catcher, Amaya. Runner Gordon not being held on. No need to hold a guy when you lead by five runs, and they're down to their last chance. Now, did you see the scoreboard shot of Nick Gordon, his photo? That's I did. The, he looks a lot like his father. Mm -hmm. right? Flash. Flash. Tom Flash, Flash Gordon. Mm -hmm. Our teammate here in Chicago. Here's the 1-1. Hit on the ground at third sharply. Glove by Wisdom. Go to second. There's the force. That's the inning. Cubs win the ball game. 5-4 on the fielder's choice. The Cubs begin the homestand in just about exactly the way they would have liked to run. They took the early lead. They got a solid start out of Jamison Tyone. Lots of offensive contributors. And the bullpen did a solid job as well. Not too much to be upset about. No, in all aspects, as you said, Cubs played very nice baseball. Jamison Tyone, I think... Starting the ball game off, two punch outs in the first inning. One swinging, one looking. I think that really got the Cubs 
ball game off and running well. And then when you start looking at the offense, Cubs score a couple in the first, score one in the second, and then the big four spot in the third inning. And that's, you know, as that game gets moving, it's just a really good ball game for the Cubs. So all in all, outstanding day for the Cubs. And we're going to go down to Bruce Levine on the field. Bruce, do you hear me? Corner, Nico, uh, obviously a great game for you guys. Coming back to Wrigley Field, always great. You're 6-1 and one at home. A lot of magic here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were gone, it felt like, for a month. So to come home here and have the sunny day and the wind blowing out, it's all you can ask for. And uh, really great to see J-Mo back on the mound. Um, it was dominant out there. It was great to see. You started it off with a big double, another RBI double after that. Uh, you know, even though you weren't hitting the ball early in the year, you were contributing every ball game. A walk, great defense. How difficult is it to concentrate when the ball isn't falling in for you now that it is? Yeah, I mean, every single one of us is going to have stretches of this year where we struggle. And, um, you know, if you're still able to contribute to a win, whether it's defense, base running, a walk, like you said, it's a big deal. And, um, you know, those things always feel a little stronger when it's the beginning of the year. But, um, you know, we're in a great spot with our offense, and I'm excited to be a part of it. You mentioned it, Jamison Tyone, back. Uh, what a shot in the arm that is for the team. Absolutely. I mean, the performance is great, but also just who he is and what he means for our clubhouse. He's a great guy everyone has fun with, and uh, he loves being out here, appreciates it, and he's going to have a great year for us. Nico, thanks for joining us. I'll see you at Chicago Cut for a great steak, okay? Sounds good to me. Guys, uh, Nico Horner, great game for everybody. Now back to you guys in the booth. Bruce, thank you very much, and thanks to Nico Horner. And thank you to Chicago Cut Steakhouse. Nico Horner will receive a gift card to Chicago Cut Steakhouse. They serve 100% USDA prime steaks, amazing fresh fish, including the classic Dover Sole prepared tableside. And they have an extensive wine list with over 600 different locations to choose from. Not locations, selections. chairman of Wrexham AFC. The people of Wrexham have shared with me their love of football, and I had a great idea to share with them my love of baseball by bringing all the things I love about it to a Wrexham game, literally. You guys know what baseball is? I'm Matt Vaskersian. And I'm Mark Griffith. We're here to call the balls and strikes. Just a bit outside. Time for the ceremonial first pitch. Let's go to Wayne, who's standing on the pitch. You mean throwing the pitch. He's standing on the turf. No, Wayne owns the turf. Well, I'm confused. Let's go to the great mascot race. And they're off. Spoiler alert, Mrs. Matt wins. Runners at first and third. He swings, and that one's fouled way into the stands, and it looks like Dad is going home with a souvenir. Oh, he can keep the ball. And that means it's bongo time. Is that Jimmy Kimmel? When did we get a jumbo trunk? One thing that football and baseball do have in common is exciting endings. Here we go. It's the bottom of the ninth. Nope. 90th minute. There are two away. With seconds left. He digs in at the plate. Penalty spots. Here's a swing. A walk-off home run penalty kick to end the game. Unbelievable. Well, that's one way to share our love of baseball. Of course, you could go see the MLB World Tour London Series. See you there. Chicago Cubs. We're back at Wrigley moments after the Cubs have beaten the Marlins. Here are the game totals. 
for the victorious Chicago Cubs. Eight runs, ten hits, and one error. For Miami, three runs, six hits, and no error. The starting pitchers got the decisions today. For the Cubs, Jamison Tyone gets the win in his first outing of the year. A.J. Puck is the losing pitcher and now is 0-4. Two hours and 25 minutes of baseball in front of 29,595. Cubs win it 8-3. to three. Ronnie and I return with a little bit more right after this on The Score and the Cubs Radio Network. Anything can happen, anytime, in any game, right here on the Chicago Cubs Radio Network. In the heart of downtown Milwaukee, there's an all-new Potawatomi Casino Hotel where there's a table waiting for you at 12 bars and restaurants. A winning seat at 40 table games or 3,000 slot machines. Plus, the thrill of bingo, full-service sports betting, and more. Are you ready to spark something new? Light up your senses at Potawatomi Casino Hotel. Explore more at PaceBig.com. If you're looking for the most epic place on Earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then, trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Attention landowners. Got big plans for your land? Tackle all your spring projects with a powerful John Deere machine. And now with 0% APR for 72 months on select compact tractors, riding lawnmowers, and gator utility vehicles, plus up to $2,000 off select compact tractors. It's never been easier to get in the seat. Offer available April 1st through 30th. Visit JohnDeere.com to find your local dealer. For complete finance details, please call toll-free 1-800-226-8903. The village of New Lenox is at the crossroads of opportunity. Come see everything that New Lenox has to offer. Go to newlenox.net today and start the adventure. New Lenox, it's extraordinary. Cubs win it by a score of 8-3. to three. Pretty good start run for this seven-game homestand. Yeah, I really don't think you could ask for much more. You know, with the doubleheader tomorrow, you know, you wanted Jamison to, to do, you know, get as deep as in the ball game as he could he threw five innings and really threw threw the ball well the offense too really allowed Craig Council to play the game at a, at a little different level because the offense jumped out to such a big lead and you knew the game was pretty safe and secure if you can say that after the last you know road trip and as we know every ball game you, you keep playing but all in all a really good ball game for the Cubs and you know when you get back home you love to start your homestand with a game like this well, Ronnie, time to get some rest. A big day tomorrow, a doubleheader, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. We'll see you tomorrow, partner. It'll be the Cubs and the Marlins. Game one tomorrow is a day game starting at 1.20. The night game tomorrow evening at 6.40. Zach Zaidman will have pregame shows for both of those about 35 minutes before the first pitch of each game. And speaking of Zach, his postgame show is right around the corner. Please stay tuned for that. Thanks to Zach for all of his fine work. Thanks to Paul Zerang, our great engineer, for his job well done as well. For former Cub and All-Star Ron Coomer, it's Pat Hughes saying thank you for listening and goodbye from beautiful and historic Wrigley Field in Chicago. Again, the final today, the Chicago Cubs 8 and the Miami Marlins 3. This has been a presentation of The Score and the Cubs Radio Network. This Odyssey Sports Broadcast has been presented by Health Markets. Shop for health insurance your way. Chicago Cubs Baseball on WSCR 670 The Score and the Cubs Radio Network has been presented to you in part by Benjamin Moore, Benny's Beverage Depot, Hefty Trash Bags, Ziegler Subaru of Kenosha, James Hardy Building Products, Sloan, Stella Blue Coffee, Traffic Tech, Wintrust Community Banks, your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers, Granger, official part of the Chicago Cubs in Wrigley Field, and by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. 
Hey Cubs fans, it's Craig Council. Listen to every game here on the Chicago Cubs radio network. The future is electrified at McGrath City Honda. Zach Zaidman here. The McGraths know the future of automobiles is electric, be it EVs or hybrid vehicles. They're looking for a cleaner future. Discover great deals on eco-friendly, efficient Hondas like the 2024 Honda CRV Hybrid, now only 3.9% APR financing for qualified buyers. Or find the all-new 2024 Honda Prologue coming soon. McGrath 